Hi, I'm Jen. I'm the owner of Cook House in San Francisco. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and healthy. I figured as a small business owner, because I'm looking up a lot of these resources for financial aid, that if you're out there and a small business owner as well, I thought I'd just, you know, um, share <laughs> what I found. There are a bunch of grants that were announced maybe about a month ago that have now opened up applications. So because a lot of their windows are very limited, only about a week or two in, on average, um, I wanted to sound the alarm and just let you know, get in line as soon as you can. Then I thought, you know, if you're curious, I wanted to share our experience about um, financial aid and what we've got, what it will cover, what it will not. Um, while I'm a poet and I don't know it. And um, finally, I wanted to talk about how we might be able to bridge that gap. One program that we came up with is called Pledge Program, and we're just rolling it out today. So um, I wanted to go into a little bit more about that and also you know, what, what's involved in our decision to stay open. So uh, first, let's talk about those grants. So there is a Facebook Small Business Grants Program, and applications opened earlier this week on Monday. Uh, the window closes on May 6th. Verizon has a partnership with Local Initiative Support Corp, and they have a Small Business Recovery Grant Program. The applications also opened earlier this week and are open for a limited time. And there's a Salesforce grant. The application details are available to see if you're eligible, but the application itself won't be available unless you live in a certain location. So you have to go to their website, sign up for updates, um, see if it's available in your locality um, yet. For all these, again, make sure to apply as soon as you can, and all of the application windows are limited. Um, if you're a small business owner like me, you probably are not eligible for unemployment, which hurts because you're probably working without pay like I am. And um, the same goes for independent contractors and self-employed people. If you're an independent chef, for example, or a florist or any other event vendor, you probably know what I'm talking about. All this you know, work and payroll and uh, managing HR and also applying for financial aid and checking in on them, doing all the paperwork, but then not actually getting any pay and not having any time to look for a new job. Um, if that's what you're looking for. For uh, applications in California, they open up on April 28th, but uh, you know the, the federal site did mention that every state has a different timeline, so you might wanna see what it's like in your own state. In ours, again, next Tuesday, uh, applications are gonna start opening up. And for all the grants that I just mentioned and the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program that I just talked about, uh, I'll include links in, for all of them in the description below. And that's on YouTube, so if you're watching on IGTV, You'll have to go over to the YouTube uh, clip because it's too hard for me to put links in YouTube uh, in IGTV. Um, I also want to talk about more lists of resources. There's so many lists out there, and if you don't know where to get started, I just wanted to mention two of them. That'll give you just a you know a, a step forward. So one of them is quite broad, and it'll list a whole lot of things. Um, a whole lot of ways about getting financial help and maybe some ways that you hadn't thought about before which might help um, expand because not expand your options because not a whole lot of um, these will actually like give you enough to to live on but together they might be able to cobble together enough to to get by so that first and the, and the second one is the is is a little bit more narrow in scope it's for food service workers but it goes into um, a lot of those smaller funds, but more targeted funds. So if you are self-employed, both of these lists are for you and I'll link them below as well. I won't go into the details of what's in them because of course they're huge lists, but um, they do explain what each one is targeted for quite well. So the first one is LVES Coronavirus Resources for freelancers, gig workers, and contractors. This is a broad overview of the various types of getting financial help. That's loans and grants, of course, but also tipping sites, unemployment resources, and more lists for contractors working in various industries. So if you're an artist or a writer, for example, they have grants and funds available just for those fields. They also have ways of explaining unemployment, explaining unemployment that is a little bit clearer than you know a lot of state sites. And tipping sites is something kind of new. I hadn't seen them before. I don't think they existed before actually. But um, basically if you're a server or a bartender in a restaurant and if somebody, if, if you have loyal customers, um, they can go into these tipping sites, look you up by restaurant and then tip you directly. Or some people go in and like randomly tip somebody because they know tipped workers are having a hard time getting through right now. Those are different um, resources that are, that are, um, 
that are referenced in in this one site but then there's also the restaurant opportunities centers united covid 19 resources a lot of these are a mouthful this list goes into smaller funds relevant to servers and bartenders so it's really good to look at if you are in one of those fields food service in general um, and again it's it goes in a little bit into smaller funds but might be a little bit more targeted so if you're having trouble getting anything any help from any of the larger funds you might want to look into one of these as well let's talk about our experience with funding um, we did get the San Francisco Business Resiliency Fund in part and it is limited use so we're still checking on that use and I don't want to go outside bounds here you know I don't want to use it on anything we're not really allowed to use it for we haven't heard back about that yet so we're still on a, in a holding pattern but um, we did get some of it which is already you know I'm really grateful for that we also got a partial EIDL advance so if you're a small business owner as well and you applied for it and then found out later that instead of ten thousand dollars in three days it was going to be 1,000 times the number of employees in three weeks, but it's still something. I'm very grateful for both, um, but it's objectively not enough to make ends meet. Um, I'll explain why in a second, but I did apply for various other grants and a PPP loan. I haven't been approved for any of these yet. The PPP loan itself is very complicated. You may have heard already from maybe the news if you're following that, but basically um, the first round ran out the second round has been approved, but I got a note from my bank, um, Chase, that we weren't approved because they needed more paperwork that wasn't required with the first one. And I overdid the paperwork for the first one, so I was really surprised by this. But now they're going to need a whole lot more, um, more records that I actually have to prepare, which I'll be cramming for for the next few days. What I wanted to address was that these uses, the uses of these funds are actually quite limited. The EIDL, which was the most um, reduced one of $3,000, is the only one that's available for us to use on anything that we need. The PPP loan and the San Francisco Business Resiliency Fund funds are only able to be used on payroll and rent. And you know, if you're familiar with small business, the, the cost of, pay, of having payrolled employees is not just limited to wages. It's also garnishments uh, like health insurance and it's employment taxes and workers comp. Um, there's the payroll itself service expense. Um, and same thing with having a physical location. It's not just rent, which is obviously a huge part of it, but it's also, um, things like electricity and having a phone line and security system, um, that kind of thing. There's a lot more that goes into it. Um, and of course there are other costs that are related to neither, like having a website um, or an invoicing system. We are going for a scorched earth mentality, or at least I am. I'm trying to figure out like, what is the absolute least we can spend so that we can bleed less cash or control the bleeding while Cookhouse is on life support. But the loans and grants that we got or have applied to are limited in use so it doesn't quite meet our needs and I am not interested in going into debt that's why I'm come up with a pledge program I'll explain this a little bit now but I'm actually gonna put a link below for more details it's like a donation but it's worth 120 percent of the donation in value um, toward cookhouse if and when we reopen and I want to emphasize that if I'll explain a little bit more later in, a, in the video about what goes into that if but I do want to emphasize that if you're, not, if you're not able to spend the money, don't. It would help us to stay open, of course, but um, only do it if you're able to. It's kind of like a gift card in that, just like gift cards, if the business goes under, it's not worth anything. But we'll add a 20% as a thank you for believing in us. I'll include more details about it via a link to our website with the pledge program on it, which just launched today. If, however, you'd like to just donate, because there, there's a minimum pledge of $100, you can contribute any amount to our Buy Me A Coffee page anytime. Buy Me A Coffee is a great site and it's generously offered to eliminate their platform fees for the month of April. Any amount is helpful, so even if you can only give $5, don't think that that's ins insignificant at all. And just seeing your names and messages is an important form of support as well. I'm not just saying that because it sounds nice, it's really true. I'll include a link to both the pledge program and buy me a coffee. So let's talk now about why we may or may not open Cookie, which is the nick nickname for Cookhouse. Um, like I mentioned, grants and loans really limit use and 
the ones with unlimited use are really limited in a number of funds. So even though I'm working, I haven't been able to pay myself anything to cover basic expenses and rent, and I do need to find paying work soon. A lot of these may come through, and we're not sure, and we're not sure when. Um, but you know, there's only so much time, five weeks so far, that we can spend just you know applying for financial aid. I find it very unproductive. I really want to get on some of the projects that you know we've um, saved for some downtime at Cookhouse. I'm really excited to work on them, but instead I'm finding that all my time is being spent toward um, finding financial aid and working on um, you know HR and paperwork and figuring out the best options for this and that and trying to spread the money across many different bills so that I can just kind of keep um, the bleeding under control. I'm at least positively optimistic. I think we'll survive this partially because everyone I've talked to that we now owe money to, we've received a lot of leniency or understanding from, um, and I should say leniency and understanding, leniency through understanding. <laughs> There's a lot of empathy because a lot of people are in the same boat. Um, also, with the funding that we did get with the San Francisco Business Resiliency Fund, we may be able to put employees to work part-time for a limited amount of time. Um, it does help. And, you know, with that, we may be able to just get everything right in shape, even if we don't get the PPP loan. In the meantime, you know, just the generosity and ideas and support among our employees and contractors has been huge. So thank you all if you're listening for that. And um, definitely let me know how you're all doing. Leave me a comment with other resources if you have them um, or what you've experienced thus far or your favorite vir virtual workouts if that's something that has helped you get through. Or if you can't decide what to write, just what temperature you like your shower. That way I know you're alive. Um, stay safe. Till next time. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to find future updates and new videos.